Good morning, everyone. I know you're having an amazing time chatting to your friends. That's why you couldn't even respond to a good morning. But good to have you here this morning. You will not be sorry you came to church today. This is my father, by the way, Melville, and I'm Kaylee, and welcome to the service. Um, Peter Rasmussen used to lead this church, and he often used to say, there's nothing like the local church when it does what it should, when it functions as it should. So what a privilege to be a part of this incredible local church that functions as it should. If you have got children who are between the ages of 2 and 12, they can go out for the incredible City Hill Kids program that is happening now. And moms, if you have got babies under the age of 2, we have got amazing moms' rooms in the back that you are welcome to use as well. And if you're online, a very warm welcome. Just say tucked up in bed. If the weather's like it is here in Hillcrest, you want to stay there. Have a cup of coffee and enjoy the service with us. Folks, we are going to worship the Almighty with some songs. And you know that's, that one verse says, put on the garment of praise. There's something about you actually have to do it. It's a doing word. And sometimes life happens and you might have had a tough week or a good week. So it's a time to celebrate and it's a time to release the other garment and put on the garment of worship in the King. Let's operate in faith and enjoy this time together. Thank you, team.
your mercies are new for us today. Thank you that we can gather together and we can glorify you, we can praise you, we can worship you in our songs this morning. We give you the highest praise, Lord Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Hey! 
that a king is mindful of me who am I that his love pursues me deeply in my pain in my brokenness and sorrow called by name I'm adopted by forgiveness saved, saved
last week uh, my wife showed me a video clip of an amazing creation at work in these in birds the two-legged ones and they their feathers and their colors were just magnificent and I made the statement tell me there is no God and that statement when you realize anything in creation if you take it and unpack it it tells you the Almighty God that you serve my father knows my name an amazing God we serve and today we're gonna have a baby dedication my father knows my name I think it's just worth honoring you for that. Shall we just pray? Lord, wow, what an amazing statement to make. You know our names. You love us. Before we were even created, you knew us by name. Thank you, Father, that tell me there is no God when we see creation at its best. We see ourselves standing here together as human beings created in your image to worship the Almighty. We love you. We look forward to your Holy Spirit speaking into us through the rest of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please take your seats. We are so excited to be um, hosting the dedication today. And just in chatting with my dad, it's been such a significant week for me, in particular with my family. My son has been struggling with um, quite a few just difficulties in his sickness and his health and it's caused like a whole whack of anxiety that's just kind of flooded in. He's in grade six and in his world he's managing a whole lot of stuff and um, obviously not being well on top of it all has not helped. And in chatting to a colleague um, the other day, he said to me, what is the meaning of your son's name? What does Kaysen mean? And I said, actually, when we named him, we just kind of made sure that it didn't mean anything like bad, but we didn't actually put a lot of emphasis on what his name meant. And so I said, according to like what I've Googled, I've never really found a meaning for his name, kind of comes up as a surname more than anything. And we were just talking about like when you are named and your name means something, it all of a sudden kind of is like a mandate over you. And although some people put significance on it and others don't, he felt in his spirit that God wanted to rename Kaysen and call him a mighty man of valor. And I just was like, wow, that is incredible. And we prayed over him and shared this word with him. And then I just happened to Google it and see, like sometimes they develop meanings of names. And when I Googled it, it came up as a brave and valiant boy. And for me, it was just so profound. And in that moment, I actually realized that not just my son's name, Kaysen, over him, but God's banner over us. And just like we sang in the song, that my father knows my name. And more than the name that you give your children and the names that we're gonna read out today, God knows who you are and you are chosen by him and his banner over you is love and his identity or your identity is found in him. And so as we read these names today, whether or not they have significance and meaning, God has called them by name. I'm just gonna call through um, the list of names. Ariana, Ela, Isabella, Liba, Noah, Reese, Sia Bonga and Corsi, Umanati, and Zoe. Wow, thanks for that sharing that word. Okay, so if all those children are here, won't you please get up and bring your parents with you to the front? <laughs> And if you brought granny and grandpa and friends, bring them as well. But come on, folks, this is a moment of celebrating these beautiful names and creations as we bring them to the Lord today. If anyone's sitting out there, if you recognize any of these folks coming up as your friends, you can come and join them. Because we've got a, some folks in our church who are going to just share a word with them now. And we're going to pray for these young ones, that God's blessings upon them and as the parents lead them. In, in their destiny, in the way of the Lord, that God's hand will be on them. So come right to the front, folks, all you with those beautiful babies. Congratulations. Just squeeze up here. There's lots of space further on this side. There we go. Once you've, once you've got the folks around you, please just share that word and pray with them.
Right, we've got a Bible that we give these couples for their children, especially if they can start reading at an early age, but it helps the parents go through some beautiful stories and truths of how God can speak into their lives. So thank you, thank you to the parents. Thank you for coming forward with your beautiful children, your gifts. Okay, so parents, as you walk back, just to let you know, we as a church have done what we had to do now. So all we can say from here now is good luck and God bless you. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> We have an amazing village. This village is here to support and bless and enrich every one of those children. To those of you who are new and visiting us for the first time, we would love to give you a very warm City Hill welcome. Can we please clap for our visitors? We are so glad that you joined us today. And after the service, if you can find the Connect stations, um, we would love to bless you with a free cappuccino voucher and just welcome you to our home. All right, we've got a number of activities coming up this week in the life of the church, so why don't you just look at the screens behind me and Kaylee and see how you can get involved. Hi, everyone. A warm welcome to City Hill. We are so happy to have you with us today. Prayer is an essential part of our lives, both personally and as a church. That's why we'd like to invite you to our prayer meeting this Tuesday, the 14th of March. We'll have some delicious food options available for purchase at 6 p.m., followed by our prayer meeting at 7. Child care will also be provided, so feel free to bring your little ones along. If you've given your life to Jesus, we would love for you to consider taking the next step in your faith journey by getting baptized. Baptism is something that we believe is important and should be done as soon as possible after accepting Christ into your heart. If you're interested in learning more about baptism, we will be having a session after today's service where you can ask any questions you may have. Our baptism service will take place next Sunday, the 19th of March, during our 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. services. If you'd like to get baptized, please sign up at one of our Connect stations or on our website. If you are new at City Hill or have been visiting us for a while, we invite you to join us at Looking in Time in the Meet and Greet Cafe after the service on the 26th of March. Looking in Time is a wonderful opportunity to hear more about the vision of City Hill and ask any questions you may have. It is also your first step to becoming a member of the church. So join us for a cup of coffee and a chat. We'd love to get to know you better. If you have any questions or would like more information about any of the upcoming events, please visit one of the Connect stations after the service or check out our website. Have an amazing Sunday and a wonderful week ahead. Thank you so much, gents. So we come to a time of our service where I like to call it investment opportunity. And it's from Matthew 6, 19, where it says, Do not lay up for yourselves, watch this one, treasures on the earth, where moth, I had to think about what moth does to destroy, but I suppose it's your clothing. You know, ladies, all that clothing you've got hanging up in your wardrobes, where moth and rust, gents, you know, all those fancy goodies and those cars and the boats and the vehicles and the bells and the whistles, where rust doth corrupt <laughs> and where thieves break in and steal. <laughs> How's that? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where those things can't happen. So I always like to check the audit of that. Look at your, your budget. In your budget, you know, you've got your income statement where God is number one. He is your source and then it's your job and any other source of income. And then your Expense items, those line by line items, is your investment item at the top? I always love looking at that one first because that brings joy and you know it gets me in a happy place. You know, I've got some money floating around, and my daughter always likes to try to tap into it, but I say, not don't touch. And that's the line that you want to say, Do I have my tithes and my offerings? I'm investing in the kingdom. It's not an expense item. You get it? It's an investment item. So it's good to have all those other bells and whistles. You are so fortunate you've got them. But are you investing in the kingdom of God as well? So I trust that that is where we want to be as a church, where we encourage each other to be and position yourself with the blessings flow. So Katie, you're going to take us through how we can invest, eh? Yes. 
so we did have a good chuckle about how we could make this more interesting, since I think everyone knows now the three ways that we can give. But after being on stage with my dad, and we all know that he follows rabbit trails very quickly, <laughs> we decided to stick, to stick in our safe lane, and Steve breathed a very big sigh of relief. So there is EFT. Um, you can also use the zapper code um, that is on the envelope on your chair that you found when you walked in. Alternatively, you can put cash in the envelope and pop it in the boxes on your way out. Or Let's... you can give Katie and I a donation afterwards if you feel free to do that. I told you, I warned you. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to be together and to be able to give back into your kingdom, Father God. Thank you that everything we have comes from you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would bless these finances, Father, for the furthering of your kingdom. We pray this in your precious name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, folks, we're going to enjoy an amazing time of Steve sharing and ministering to us on identity and shift. Don't shift. Stay where you are. You're joining us for this part of the service. And I, and I do want to just mention this before the little video clip comes on prior to Steve sharing. When we, him and I were just connecting earlier, I kind of said, how's your week gone? He said, wow, he's been up to Nell Spray to minister. He's been down to the Eastern Cape at a conference to share. He's had kind of 14 engagements over nine days. And now he's ready and pumped for today as well. So we value that, Steve. Thank you so much. And uh, let's have a look at the the, the video clip and then over to Steve. You are unique. unique. Different. A master of chosen love. love. Original. Set, Set apart. Fearfully and, and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made. Created. Ordained. ordained. everybody. Good to see you here this morning celebrating the babies and the baby dedication. Really, really awesome. Um, we often have lots of guests on those days, so a huge welcome to you as well. And if you do have a little one, we've got four different rooms, age appropriate, under the age of two and a half, uh, for that you can still watch the message. So if your kid makes a little bit of noise, thank you. Um, in advance for making use of one of those rooms. And just two other things of, that, of the video announcements we watched just now. The pre-meeting this Tuesday night, for me that's an engine room meeting in the life of the church. We pray for 45 minutes from 7 to 7.45. There's food beforehand. Please come along and join us. You won't be given a microphone and asked to pray we, in this auditorium, uh, but awesome to as a church. Uh, lift up prayer requests before God. And then the water baptism teaching that's after the service. Water baptism is not just an added extra, an optional extra to the journey of faith. It is actually commanded by Christ. Repent and be baptized. He said, go into all the world, teach everyone to obey the commands I've given them, baptizing them. So when you baptize by immersion, it's actually obedience to Christ's command. So that's happening in the meet and greet uh, here in person afterwards. So if you are new to City Hill, we are doing this identity series, um, this workbook we've been working through. We're in week five today. Uh, page 12 is the space for the f um, message notes. And then this week on page 13 in our midweek group videos, the title is How Do I Prepare My Life for Eternity? Um, I've driven past some roadworks recently and they put down different layers of soil and rocks, etc., whatever the engineers have specified. And then they bring out the heavy rollers to compact that down. And I hope that as the five weeks have gone so far over these six weeks, that the heavy roller is compacting into our lives the truth of what it means to be a follower of Christ, this amazing identity that we get from Him. So we've spoken about already in the series that we are children of God and He is our Father, that we're a servant and He's our Master, that we are a saint. Steph preached on that last Sunday. Thank you, Steph. And that Christ is our Savior. And as if all of that wasn't enough, today we're looking at this amazing identity. I am a citizen of heaven and He is my King. So if you're taking notes on the top of page 12, you might like to write down, I am a citizen. He is my king. Speaking of citizenship, uh, one of the best places to understand this from is, an earth, is earthly citizenship. And it would be interesting to know in this building and watching online how many different citizenships there are. Uh, some of you were born in a country different to the one you currently live in, so you hold that citizenship. Some of you, uh, as we're here in South Africa, like me, born here, 
I have a Green Mamba passport, the South African passport. I don't have another one. Some of you have got dual citizenship. And in conversations that uh, I've had with some people like that, you've, you've gone out of your way to, you know, share that fact that I'm a citizen here, but also of another country. I travel on a double passport. Um, I haven't, I love South Africa. Born here, I love this country. And the only time I've wished I could have an extra passport wasn't to live somewhere else, unless God very specifically directed me. It was just to avoid hassles when it came to travel. On one particular occasion, we traveled to a, a different country. I was with Jax, and uh, we got there, and I, I had been told, all the expert advice I'd got was that I didn't need a visa. And when I got there, they said, your wife is fine to come in, but what, there were some major complications. I was questioned for four hours at the airport. While there, I see a guy being deported, kicking and screaming, don't send me back, they will kill me. Thinking, don't mess around in this country. And uh, they sent me back home. They said, you can't come in. And I had to fly back to South Africa, get another visa, or get a visa, fly all the way back. Now, for the second time in a week, I'm back at the same passport counters. And uh, as I step forward, the lady types in, scans my passport, looks at me, types again. She says, have you had trouble getting into our country before? I said, well, long story, but last week I was here, and she said, please step to the side. And she brings the guys up in the top office, and they come down and double-check everything. I was sweating quite profusely, hoping I didn't get sent home a second time. It's moments like those that I've wished for another earthly passport. But no matter which citizenship on earth you hold or what you would like to if you had the option, nothing of earthly citizenship compares, us, uh, compares to this amazing truth is that when we become followers of Christ, we get a new heavenly eternal citizenship. Paul writes about this in Philippians 3 verse 18 through 21, and he says this, for as I've often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. He's speaking about people that have rejected uh, following Christ for themselves. And he says their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. And he says their mind is set on earthly things. He says that's a key defining feature of what it means to just be an earthly citizen without Christ. Your mind is set on earthly things. The very next phrase, he says this, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Wow. Paul is reminding us in this text about the fact that there are only two possible spiritual kingdoms to be part of. We are born into the first kingdom. The king of this kingdom is the devil. He's a terrible king. He's a terrible spiritual father. And the defining anthem feature of this kingdom, their mind is set on earthly things. All that matters is what happens in this world. All that matters is things like success about how much I earn, how I look, what makes me feel good, what I own, what, how I feel, etc., etc. All of us started out there. And the king of this amazing kingdom invited us to be a citizen of his kingdom. On earth, it's possible to purchase citizenship. If you're willing to spend enough millions, you could purchase a citizenship in some countries on this earth. They aren't very eager just to have people pitching up, so they make it very difficult to get those citizenships. But when it comes to our spiritual citizenship, there's this astonishing truth in the Bible, is that there's a price to become a citizen of that kingdom that none of us could afford, and the high king of that kingdom pays the ultimate price to purchase our citizenship for us. No wonder Paul's so excited that our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await our Savior from there. I'd like to look this morning at three defining things about this amazing kingdom and about, this, about citizenship in this kingdom. The first one is this, is that this world is not my home. It's not my ultimate long-term home. In Hebrews chapter 11, there's this chapter where the writer talks about all the great men and women of faith, or a number of them from the Bible, and he recounts how they lived. And then he says this about them. He says, all these people were still living by faith when they died. 
They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were, listen to this phrase, foreigners and strangers on earth. Although they lived here, it says they admitted, I'm a foreigner and a stranger. He says, people who say such things show that they are longing for a country of their own. They were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I'd like you to note these two phrases from that text is the phrase foreigners and strangers on earth and a better country. He says one of the defining features of the great men and women of faith of the past is that they didn't see this world as their ultimate home. In fact, they viewed themselves as foreigners and strangers. The one, a version of the Bible says foreigners and aliens of this country, of this, of this world. And they are longing for a better country. The one that God has prepared our eternal dwelling forever and forever and forever. What an incredible thing to think that this king has prepared, he's not just invited us into citizenship in his his world, his kingdom, but is preparing an eternal city, a long-term dwelling place for every single one of us. I'd like to tell you what I believe the difficulty or the the challenge many Christ followers have is that we are so earthly-minded that we are no heavenly good. We are so taken up with all the things of this earth and we're called to live in this world, to be effective and influential and part of it, but we are so taken up, our fear and our joy is based completely on things of the earth. Paul says, but our citizenship is in heaven. Look at those people who knew that this was not their ultimate home. The truth is that the very best this world has to offer falls far short of the most insignificant thing that heaven has to offer. And yet many of us live as if this world is the ultimate and heaven is a prize B. It's completely the opposite way around. To illustrate this, um, using an earthly story, uh, some years back I had the privilege of visiting a developing country and the conditions were quite tough. We We stayed in these really vulgarian style accommodation. I mean, I go into my room that night and I pull back this little duvet thing off my bed. This bed sheet, I've just checked into this B&B. The bed sheet looks like a thousand snails have been let loose on it. It it is dirty. The pillow was so dirty, I took an old sweaty shirt to put over as my pillowcase. I I just lay there. It it was stinking hot. I lost liters of fluid. There was more electricity off than on which was novel for me in those days. And um, it it was hardcore. uh, It was just an endurance exercise for seven days. And every day I'm counting the sleeps till I can go home. And I line up in this long queue now to get onto that airplane. And the check-in agent walks down the queue and says, are you a South African citizen? And picks us out of the queue. And we go like this priority boarding. I'm like, oh yes, I'm going home. And then we climb on the aeroplane and there's air conditioning on the aeroplane. I'm like, oh, I'm going home. And they, I, I got in my seat. I felt like kneeling down and kissing the seat cushion. This is the seat that's taking me home. And then the announcement came on the plane that we've been delayed for maybe three or four hours because of technical difficulty. I said, I don't care. As long as I stay in the seat, don't take me off. Don't send me back. I want to go home. You see, many of us, we don't understand that this is the... This is the temporary, this world. But heaven is our home. Let's not invest all our fear and all our joy and all our hope in this world because it's passing away. Heaven is our home. We're separated from our heavenly home by a mere breath, a mere breath between this temporary home and that eternal one. In 2018, on the 21st of February, Billy Graham passed away. He was 99 years old, and following his death, a statement was released by his family. His grandson, Will Graham, read it out, and and this is what he read. He said, my grandfather once said, one day you'll hear Billy Graham has died. Don't you believe it? On that day, I'll be more alive than ever before. I've just changed addresses. My friends, Will goes on to say, today my grandfather moved from the land of the dead to the land of the living. 
Today, he had that opportunity to realize the hope himself, kneeling before his Savior and hearing the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Billy Graham clearly understood that he was a citizen of heaven. The Bible teaches us that as a citizen of heaven, there's a new eternal body waiting for us, one that will never grow sick, tired, or depleted. This body is a tent. That body is our home. There'll be no more crying, no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, no bills to pay, no crime, no problems with power. The revelation says that the king provides light for that city eternally. This world is not my home. That one is. You and I, if you're, Christ, if you're a follower of Christ, you and I are not primarily citizens of earth fighting our way through life, competing with seven billion other people just to get a little bit ahead. No, we are primarily citizens of heaven with all of the vast access to the King's supply of love, kindness, peace, and grace. We are not primarily citizens of earth trying to climb this long ladder to somehow get to God. We are instead citizens of heaven, seated with Christ in heavenly places, bringing his kingdom here to earth. Because of this, there are times when you and I will feel like aliens and strangers on this earth. That doesn't mean that we're in the wrong place. It means that heaven is our home and we're on special assignment here until we get there. That was point one. Point number two, as a citizen of heaven, I have unique protection and benefits. As a citizen of heaven, I have unique protection and benefits. What's interesting to me is that the verse we read at the beginning, Philippians 3.20, our citizenship is in heaven, it was written by Paul, who had quite an interesting story of his earthly citizenship. In Acts chapter 22, we read that Paul gets arrested and, uh, by Roman soldiers and he gets stretched out and he's about to be flogged. And while they're about to flog him, he says this. He says to them, is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen, speaking of himself, who hasn't even been found guilty? Now, it's quite interesting to understand the context of what Paul meant. The, the Roman Empire had dominated and beaten up loads of other countries and just absorbed their people as slaves and as just people living. But Roman citizens were few and far between. Roman citizens had special privileges and special protection. And if you were wealthy enough, you could purchase Roman citizenship or you were born a citizen. It wasn't automatic and it wasn't easy. So Paul now says, is it legal for you guys to flog a Roman citizen? Listen to the commander's response. It says the commander went to Paul and said, tell me, are you, are you really a Roman citizen? He says, yes, I am. The commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship, but I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Then those who were about to interrogate him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. He was scared for his own health because Roman citizens got the protection and benefit of Rome. It was no small thing to be a Roman citizen. And yet, when Paul becomes a follower of Jesus Christ, when he writes his letters to different churches, he doesn't start them by saying, Paul, a Roman citizen, by the way, like the highest earthly, you know, platinum level you can get. He says, Paul, an apostle called by God. He never mentions his Roman citizenship in his writings. He mentions, I'm a citizen of heaven. Citizen of Rome, citizen of heaven. A citizen of this empire by birth to uh, biological parents. A citizen of heaven by supernatural birth, a rebirth that Jesus speaks about, where I am transferred from that kingdom into this. My Father Knows My Name, beautiful song that our music team wrote that we sang earlier. This idea that regardless of how high or low our citizenship or status on earth is, Paul, a Roman citizen, doesn't even bother with that. He says, much more important, I'm a citizen of heaven. Let's me know that as a citizen of heaven, I live under the protection and the benefits of this amazing king. Our king says to us, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. He says things like this, he will cover us with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. He says that we can come to him and ask him to give us this day our daily bread, Matthew 6. He has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ, Ephesians 1 and verse 3 as we read. I have unique protection and benefits from being a citizen of heaven. 
whatever your view is of uh, US, the US government and political policies, et cetera, you have to acknowledge they have got the most powerful, like wealthiest country, the biggest army to back up whatever they choose to do. And what's interesting is that if you look at the beginning of COVID, there were American citizens in China and the US government went to all the expense they needed to, the State Department goes out, finds out, are there US citizens here? Afghanistan, when the US Army withdraws, are there any US citizens whose life are at risk? And they will go to any expense, take, do whatever it takes to get US citizens out of harm's way and repatriate them back home. What's interesting about our king is he is infinitely more powerful and he doesn't pull us out of danger every single time. In fact, he says, on some, on some of your mission here on earth, I'm gonna send you into danger. I'm gonna send you out like sheep amongst wolves, he says. I've got special assignments that might end up costing you your life, but remember this world is not your home. And remember, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. As a citizen of earth, I have to worry about how am I gonna get ahead. As a citizen of heaven, I can say I'm following, I'm with my king and he's more importantly, he is with me. Thirdly, as a citizen of heaven, I have an amazing king. This is my final and my most important point. My citizenship in heaven is incredible because the king of heaven is incredible. This kingdom is not made amazing by all of its citizens, it's made amazing by its king. Paul in Philippians 3, we read, he says this, we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he talks about Christ's power that can bring everything under his control will also transform us to be like him. Are you and I in awe of this amazing king? Or is our view of Jesus that he's small, a little bit weak, kind and loving, but not able to keep us and to move us? What a privilege to be a citizen of his kingdom. In 1976, a preacher in Detroit, Michigan, his name was Shadrach Meshach Logridge. I'm guessing his parents liked the story of Daniel. That's where his first two names come from. And Shadrach Meshach Lockridge preaches a sermon that's entitled, That's My King. And it's become one of my favorite ever sermons because I came across a, like a, a not quite a lyric video, but a, where they took his actual recording put some pictures and words, and there have been quite a few of these videos that have been made. I would like to finish my message by reading out some of what he said that day about Jesus. The Bible says he's the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. Now that's my king. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. That's my king. He's God's son. He's the sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He's august. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's supreme. He's preeminent. That's my king. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? My king is the key of knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. He's the master of the mighty. He's the captain of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislators. He's the overseer of the overcomers. He's the governor of governors. He's the prince of princes. He's the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. Now that's my king.
Please would you stand with me? In terms of how we pray, I'm gonna invite you in a moment to talk to God right where you're standing. But we've got this king as the king of this kingdom. And yet the challenge all of us face is that our minds are sometimes so set on earthly things, the defining feature of that kingdom. And this king doesn't call us to go and sit in a little bubble, withdraw from everybody, read the Bible and pray 24 hours a day. That's not what he's called us to do. He's called us to connect with him in private and then go out and live with him in our day-to-day lives, but not be so earthly minded that we're not heavenly good. And when our sense of joy and peace and security comes from him, then we feel sometimes like aliens and strangers. This world's not my home, but he is coming for me. I have an eternal dwelling that far outweighs this one. I said, secondly, that as a, unique, as a citizen of that uh, kingdom, I have unique protection and benefits, but most importantly, I have an amazing king. Right where you're standing today or seated, wouldn't you close your eyes and just begin to talk to that king? So Father, help me, rescue me from my earthly mindedness. Father, this morning we're so grateful for these incredible verses in your Bible that remind us of this amazing new identity that we are citizens of heaven. And yet for so many of us, our most important status is what's happening here on earth. And I pray that you would deliver us from ourselves. Help us to see you, King Jesus, more and more as you really are. Help us to live in in, uh, connection with you, communion with you through the day, thinking, looking to you for guidance, for help, for strength, and for courage. We're so quick to rely on our own strength and sometimes so slow to rely on and look to you. Help us, I pray. Help us, I pray. I wonder if you'd look at me for just a final minute. At the end of our messages, it's normal that we give an opportunity for those who haven't yet put their faith in Christ to do so, i.e. to switch from this kingdom to that kingdom. And uh, one of our leaders came forward earlier during the service and he said he felt we needed to do just, we don't always do it like this, but that God's message to us today was about strength and courage. So I'd like to invite you this morning that if you've never put your faith in Christ, or maybe you've detoured far away from what your citizen should look like, and you've been living much more like that, never, you, either you've never put your faith in Christ or else you've detoured far off the freeway that you should be on. You're sitting somewhere in Umbumbulu when you should be on the N3, if I could use that as a, and no disrespect to Umbumbulu, I'm just a metaphor. But today, spiritually, you need to bring your life back on track with Christ or begin serving Him for the first time. I'm inviting you to step out of your chair and come down here to the front. We'd love to get someone from our church to pray with you. Step of faith and courage that says, God, I've switched and I'm switching kingdoms. I want to live on this side, following this amazing King. If you're in the balcony, you can come down the steps that are on the left and right. If you're down here, welcome to come down one of the aisles. Is there anybody? I'm waiting for you down here in the front. Anybody who needs to put their faith in Christ, make right with God today. Awesome, awesome. Come and stand down here. Brilliant. That takes courage. Takes courage. Anybody else? Come down, there's some people moving in the balcony. Anybody else down here? Might need to adjust the lights. Thanks, guys. Let's take a step of faith and courage this morning. What is your name? Anybody else want to come up and join Denise and Joshua up here in front with me? Let's take some courage. Brilliant. Are you guys coming down? We'll wait for you. There may be one or two people, you standing there, your heart is pounding. If that's God saying you should be there. The, the other voice, the wrong voice is one says, don't worry, next month, next year, it's all the same. No better day than today. Well done, well done, welcome.
Good to have you guys. Good. Yes. Awesome. You're coming down as well. Brilliant. Anybody else? I wonder if we could have someone from our um, eldership and deacon team, just a guy with, standing with a guy, a lady with a lady, just to stand and pray for you guys. Takes quite a lot of courage, hey, in a building like this, but I think it takes even more to walk away when you know what God's calling you to do. Are you all three, are you three together? No, You're just like, hey, we need some moral support. <laughs> awesome, well done. Great, good. Somebody else to pray this side as well. And I'd like you to follow me, please, in this prayer before you prayed for, just to pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for doing things my own way. Thank you for loving me enough to die for me. Thank you that you purchased my citizenship in heaven. I want to follow you from today for the rest of my life and be with you for all eternity. Thank you for adopting me into your family. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. The person standing with you is going to keep praying for you. For the rest of us, please stay standing just the last 30 seconds. Mel and Kaylee are going to come and land our meeting. Thank you, Steve. That was really amazing. I just, I just love that comment about be careful of being so earthly minded, you have no heavenly good. Now we would be careful of such an amazing sermon or message that we are not so heavenly minded that we know earthly good. So may you be blessed as you go out to make the kingdom come alive in your daily lives. Katie's got a few just reminders for you. Just a reminder to our first time visitors to please find a connect station on your way out and grab your free cappuccino. Also that we have got our water baptism teaching off the service now in our meet and greet cafe. And then yes, have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Come and join us for a cappuccino or free tea and coffee in the foyer. Have a beautiful day. Yeah.